Hi, thank you for clicking on my video and returning to my channel and also thank you guys for 30 subs. What? Am I famous now? I feel famous. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the books that I read in the month of February, which were not a lot. And I know you hear a lot of people say, oh, I didn't read that much. I only read like 15 books. <laughs> when I say that I did not read a lot, I really mean I did not read a lot. I'm a graduate student, so I go to grad school and there's a lot of readings and work that goes into that. I'm writing a novel and I have a lot of other responsibilities. I'm a girlfriend, which in and of itself is, that's a full-time job. So I'm also a TA, so that's another job that I have. I just have a lot of things that are on my plate and so reading a lot of times gets put on the back burner or you know, it takes me longer to get through one book because I'll only read it before bed and then I maybe manage 30 minutes before I knock the F out and go to bed. So when I say I didn't read a lot, I mean I didn't read a lot. I read four books and I'm very proud of those four books because I honestly thought I was only going to read like two. Of the four, I read two physical books that I have here to share with you. The other one was an audiobook, and then the third one was an ebook. So, the first book that I finished in the month of February was Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. Um, if you don't know what this series is about, where have you been? So, the Six of Crows duology essentially follows six outcasts that are trying to pull off this seemingly impossible heist. It's part of the Christian universe, so hopefully, you're familiar, and if not, where have you been? So there's kind of a lot of subplots that happen in here. There's this drug that's kind of enhancing the powers of the Grisha and the implications of that and get them addicted to it and kill them and turn them into weapons essentially. Favorite part, like the plot itself is, is interesting, but honestly, like I don't even give a shit about the drug and the heist. What really intrigued me was seeing the six of them interact together. So I know this isn't a January wrap up because it technically wasn't on booktube in January, but in January I did read the first book, Six of Crows, and I gave that one a four out of five stars. It was good, but I felt like a lot of the character development was a little bit missing in that one. It focused a lot on two of the main characters, maybe three of the main characters, and then kind of let the other ones fall by the wayside. But where that one was lacking in that character development, this one totally picked it up and like, <sighs> give this five out of five stars. Um, it was so good, so well crafted. Lee Bardugo's writing style is fantastic. Her world building, which is the one thing that I loved so much about the Grisha trilogy was the world building. Also, I'm just a slut for world building and the world building in the Grisha trilogy was like, mm. 10 out of 10. The next book that I read in the month of February is King of Scars, also by Lee Bardugo. Um, do you notice a trend? <laughs> so King of Scars follows a character from the original Grisha trilogy, so I don't see how you could read King of Scars without reading the original Six of Crows, or oh, reading the original Grisha trilogy. Um, there's just so much in here that one spoils you for all those three books. But also, like, if you go into this not having read them, I feel like you're going to be really confused. So, as I said before, King of Scars follows the character from the original Grisha trilogy, Nikolai Lansoff, who is our privateer, our sturmhound, our precious fox. Um, I did really like his character in the original Grisha trilogy. I feel like not as much as everybody else likes him. Like, he was just okay for me. I enjoyed the banter that he brought and the comedic relief. Like I said before, this kind of follows the aftermath of the events that happened in um, the original Grisha trilogy. This is like a couple years later um, and a, right after the Six of Crows duology. So we're following three, four-ish? 3.5-ish characters. <laughs> we're following Zoya, who's another character from the original Grisha trilogy. And then we're following our girl Nina, who's from the Six of Crows duology. I forgot to say that um, the fourth perspective is Isaac. Okay, cool. If you saw my vlog, uh, my reading slash writing vlog, so you'll kind of know that I have conflicting feelings about this book. 
did I enjoy myself? Yes, I had a good time reading this and I think at the end of the day that's super important in a book. I wasn't a fan of the main ship in this um, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that but like there's obviously some kind of connection or budding romance happening between Nikolai and Zoya. I don't know why I didn't like this, I can't tell you. You know what? A part of the reason why I probably didn't like the ship is for some unknown reason in the back of my head, I was like, there's gonna be a ship between Nikolai and Nina. I think that's because when the book was first introduced, we're like, kind of like, oh, it's Nikolai's book, and then Lee Bardugo said that Nina was gonna be in it, so I guess my mind like just auto-filtered and was like, oh my god, is this gonna be a book about... <laughs> about the things that happen after and then Nikolai like with Nina and it's gonna be really cute. I think I got caught up in that like pretend ship that I just made in my head that by the time I read this and then saw the romance happening between Nikolai and Zoya I was not feeling it. I know saying that that was like my ship is kind of dumb because not to spoil things from Crooked Kingdom but if you read Crooked Kingdom it just it seems like it was a really short time after those events that Nina probably wouldn't even give a fuck about Nikolai, so. <clears throat> thing was okay, it could have been a little bit better. It drags at some parts and doesn't drag in others. But my main issue, like ships aside, because the romance is typically not the most important thing in a book and it wasn't in this one at all. But in the Grisha trilogy, there's a set rule to the magic and it kind of like there's a system, there's a set magic system that's guiding how Grishas live and how they operate. It gets a little bit questioned in the Six of Crows duology with Param and the drug and how it affects um, Grishas. And I was willing to accept that and I believed it. Then we get to this and I feel like everything we learned about the Grisha magic and the Grisha universe just completely turned on its head. And now all those rules that we were given don't make sense. And they, they don't apply, essentially. That didn't work for me. <laughs> because I don't like investing all this time and, and all of this emotional investment into this world and these characters and the way that their powers function only to be told, like, how many books later that that doesn't matter. It's cheap to me, like, that was just put there for the sake of stirring shit up in the book and I don't feel like that did this universe justice in my opinion. That being said though, the ending freaking blew my mind. <laughs> like, ugh, there were so many hints and things that led up to that moment where I was like, nah, Lee's not gonna do that. Lee Bardigo is not gonna do that. She's not gonna pull that shit. But I really should have known because if she's willing to completely erase all the rules of the Grisha universe, then why not have an ending like that? At the end of the day, I did give this a 3.5, right? I think that's what I put in my Goodreads. <laughs> 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, I do, I love the character of Nikolai. Zoya was okay for me. Nina's parts were probably my favorite parts. Just seeing her grieve and seeing her, this new sense of mission that she has. Um, that was great but like a huge part of this book is how the magic system operates and that was a huge problem for me. We're just gonna pretend like for the first two books that I talked about, I was completely in frame, okay? Thanks. And the third book that I read in the month of February was an audiobook and that was I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. It's a true crime mystery, not mystery, kind of mystery, thriller. This was my first time reading a book in this genre, so book about the Golden State Killer, which if you're unfamiliar with mass rapists slash murderers in California, then you wouldn't know who that is. <laughs> it's a basically um, her obsession and her research on how to find the Golden State Killer. And it was such a fascinating read. So if you're unaware, uh, Michelle McNamara actually passed away before the Golden State Killer was arrested. I think she was actually, she actually died like, oh, I, don't quote me, two months before? I don't really know. She did pass away before the killer was caught and she did pass away before she could finish writing this book. So there's a huge chunk of the book that is written by her. Um, and then another section, I think it's like the third part, the third and a quarter part of the book 
that is kind of put together by her research and her notes and I think her editors and other people that helped her with the book kind of finished it up for her. I had watched um, Kat from Paperback Dreams um, wrap up video where she talks about this book because she did read it and it made me a little hesitant to go into the audiobook because she said that the first half of it was really good and then the second half just kind of like the voice shifts or changes and it just doesn't it kind of loses her and so I was worried that that would happen with me as well and it was really interesting to see this because the like I said the first like huge chunk of the book is written by Michelle McNamara and there's just a certain quality to her words and her voice she created this tone in the book that was very much like it was journalistic in a way but it was also very captivating and entertaining and you just wanted to keep listening to her and the way that she decided to describe things or the little minute details that mattered to her were incredible to read and the first half of this book really does focus a lot obviously it's a book about the golden state killer but it focuses a lot as well on the victims and who they were as people before this incident and this tragedy happened to them which i thought was so interesting to get to the sections that were written by her editor essentially or by people who were working with the book with her and collecting her notes and things and putting those together it does kind of shift a little bit the voice focuses more directly on the killer and the way he would prowl through the night for his victims and so it did the focus I felt shifted a little bit where it, there were still inklings of the victims it was definitely more centered on the actual killer so and I don't know if I was really vibing with that because I was so enjoying and enamored with Michelle's writing and how she wrote it. Um, so it was unfortunate that it couldn't continue throughout the book and I can't help but wonder would I have given this book a full five stars if that persisted throughout. So I did give the book th three stars? <laughs> I think I gave the book three stars. If I'm wrong, I'll fix it on the screen. But yes, I gave the book three stars. I enjoyed my time reading it. It actually got me freaked out. I was read I was listening to the audiobook at night before bed. And I would actually have to like, if I was falling asleep, I'd have to like stop the audiobook, watch like a kitten video or something or talk to my boyfriend and be like, hey, can you just say something happy? Because I'm a little freaked out right now. That's kind of how reading that book was like, but it was just so entertaining and like I felt like I had this look on my face of like Every time my boyfriend would look at me there I was just He'd be like, hey, is your book good? And I'd be like I mean, it was a good book. I enjoyed myself reading it and it was just it's so dark and like twisted what happened and anyways three out of five stars it was great I do recommend it if you're like just starting off in the true crime genre I felt like this was a good bridge for me I have my laptop with me so now I can be more accurate with my reviewing the last book that I read in the month of February was an ebook and I read Peluda by Melissa Lozada Olivia and this is a poem a collection of poetry that was printed through button poetry which if I'm not mistaken they're like a branch from or they're they were created by like YouTube or something. I'm not 100% sure, don't quote me. And so her poetry really looked a lot at her relationship and her body and just what her body meant for her and how people were perceiving her body. There were so many poems in there about body hair and how there's like this removal of it and how it grows back and it was just so powerful. And then there's this discussion of body image and more specifically Mexican body image like as a Mexican woman and a Mexican young girl how your body is portrayed and how you are told to handle your body and how other people handle it and it was just so good and I mean I there were so many poems and so many things that I highlighted and underlined because it was just so good and I need to get my hands on a physical copy so bad because it was so good and if it's not already apparent I gave this five out of five stars and I just think that if you're first generation of immigrant families, then you should check this out, especially for Latinx. Like, this was just so good. I feel like I didn't do it justice talking about it. Like, I just, it was good. I think it just does such a good job at looking at people of color and how our bodies differ from others. But at the end of the day, like, 
there's such outwardly differences because inside we're all the same. We're all people. But we focus so much on the outward and, and the body hair and the armpit hair and the arm hairs and the color of skin that our struggle happens. And it, this was just such a really great poetry collection and I'm so glad that I read it. And we reached the end. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of February. Yes, I know, I read so much. Thanks for sticking around and watching when I was cut like this in the video and when I was like this and moving around because I'm uncomfy here and I haven't found a right position or spot to film in yet. So I'm kind of just hanging out. <laughs> Thank you guys for taking time out of your day to watch my mess of a video and to hear about my thoughts about the books that I read. Super appreciate you. Please subscribe if you're not already. Oh, oh, oh. I recently made a tweet. If you're not following me on Twitter, go follow me on Twitter. Um, I'm going back to my book blog as well, not just creating a booktube. But about three years ago, I did have a book blog and it's called People Like Books, and I, it was doing really well and fantastic. I started it in college in my undergrad, and I just kind of let it go because I got super busy, but I want to pick it back up again. So I will leave a link in the description box below if you guys want to go check it out and follow me. I would really appreciate the support, and uh, yeah, I'll be posting more in-depth reviews on the books that I read in that book blog. So you should go follow that too if you want more in-depth stuff. And uh... Yeah, thanks so much for watching. See you in the next video.